This is Fusion 360. It is a great parametric modeling program from Autodesk. I'm going to show you some of the features of the user interface so that we can more easily navigate the software as we begin modeling. The first thing to note is up in the upper left, we have an application bar, and it has some typical icons that you see in lots of different software. We have save button and undo buttons, and most of the time you'll use keyboard shortcuts for these features. We also have a file menu where we can make new designs. Here is an important part of Fusion 360. It's the data panel. This is where you'll see all your projects organized. And if you double click inside a project, you'll see different files that you have. And you can also create folders and start organizing different parts of your projects. This is very helpful. It's a good idea to keep the data panel closed. That way you have more modeling space. If you go to the upper right and you hover over your account icon, you can go to the preferences. There are many different preferences in Fusion 360 that we'll go over as we begin modeling, but it's important for you to change these preferences depending on what project you're working on and what different things you need to do. One to notice is the default modeling orientation. Depending on what CNC machine you are using, you may want to change it to Y up. One of the most important things about a 3D modeling program is how do we navigate around in 3D space on a two-dimensional monitor. In Fusion 360, we do that with the view cube. Up in the upper right, we can see the view cube. And if I click on different faces, you'll notice that the model orientates itself to the front, to the left, to the bottom. And I can grab the edges of the cube and pivot around this way. I can also come down to the bottom of the screen here where we see another section of tools. And I can click Orbit, and then I can orbit around as I wish. But that's a lot of mouse clicks. A better way to do this, I can hold the Shift key and then the center mouse button and orbit around. I can also hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows and the center mouse button, and then I can pan around. This is very convenient. And I can use the center scroll wheel to zoom in and out then hold the Alt Option key, pan around, hold the Shift key, orbit a little bit, and then I can have high fidelity motion without taking my hands off the mouse or the keyboard. Up in the View Cube, you'll notice there's this little triangle. We can select that and we can change how we see things. So we can change it to perspective or perspective with orthographic faces. What this does is now you can see that this looks like it's in perspective. And if I zoom out, you'll notice that everything is a little bit different. But then if I click to the right-hand view, you'll notice it snaps to an orthographic view. This can be convenient for modeling, but generally I leave it on orthographic. Another convenient thing is, say we're working in here on this fillet. This is a very important part. We want to keep seeing it. Well, we can set this as home. So we can say, set current view as home, fixed distance. So now if I'm zooming around and orbiting, I can click the home icon and it's gonna snap right back to this view. So that's very convenient if you have to double check things at different parts of your model. But it can be frustrating because what if I really just wanna click on home and see the model? Well, you can click on the arrow and then you can reset the home. So now if I click on home, I'm gonna come back to this default view. So navigating around in 3D space is one of the most important skills to learn in Fusion 360. The next most important thing is to navigate around all the different pieces of your models because the models will be very complex. They'll be made of sketches, of planes, objects, bodies, components, assemblies, different things. And we do that in the browser. It's over on the left-hand side of the screen. Think of it as a file browser. You can twirl out different directories and folders. You have eyeballs that you can hide things just like in Photoshop or other uh, graphics programs. So it's very convenient and very powerful. Fusion 360 is made up of a number of different workspaces. We have a design workspace, generative design, rendering, animation, simulation, manufacturing, and drawing. And if I click on different workspaces, such as render, notice at the top, the tool options that I have are now different. And I can click on simulation. And once again, I'll have different tool options. I'm gonna go back to design. And in certain workspaces, you'll notice that there are tabs, solid, surface, sheet metal, and tools. And if I click on these tabs, the tools that are available to me change. What Fusion is trying to do is give you the tools that will help you in the context that you're in. 
There are so many tools that sometimes it can be helpful to search for them. So at any time, you can always press the S key and then you can type in rectangle and you'll see all the different rectangles that we can use for sketching. So this is a great way to find different tools you want to use. Another way to find tools is to right click. So if I right click, I get this fly out context menu that has different things on it that I can use relative to the thing that I'm working on. And notice at the top here, there's these different cones. So think about where this press pull section is. Now, if I hold the right mouse key down and I gesture that way, it automatically selects press pull. So I don't even have to go into the menu. So that can be helpful or it can just be confusing. Let's look at a different object. So here we have a bottle that we can navigate around and it has materials and appearances applied to it. We'll talk about that in a future video. But an important part of Fusion is that it's a parametric modeling program. That means that everything in the model is driven by dimensions, sketches, and different parameters. We call these features in Fusion 360. And if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see what's called the timeline. And it has all the features. This is just like a video editing software where you have different scenes, but these ones build on top of each other. We can move the playhead to the beginning and notice we have nothing. Then I can step through my design and I can see all the stages of it as it's being produced and completed and modeled. The powerful thing about Fusion is we can go back in at any time and change these parameters and update our model as it goes through. Sometimes if you make drastic changes, it will break things. But for the most part, if you build your models well, you can make all kinds of changes as your design evolves. So those are the most important things about Fusion 360. I think the best way to learn a piece of software is to actually use it rather than studying the user interface in an abstract way. So let's do that. In the next video, we'll actually model a small part so we can learn the user interface of Fusion actually using the software.